L.A. at this point has gotten more snow than New York City. It's snowing in L.A. for some reason. They definitely have more flakes. They're freaking out. Well, there oh, you go. Oh, speaking oh, of, oh, uh, well, speaking of L.A. flakes. <laughs> what the hell is on before us? Oh, my God. <laughs> but you don't listen? Oh, well, you know the gag. I mean, it's on in the bathroom. Yeah. And look, we're on in a lot of cities, so don't be insulting. We're not talking about the show before us in your fine city. We're talking about the show before us here in New York City. Oh, God, do they stink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. Maybe someone out there likes it. And I'm sorry, John. I'm, I'm probably insulting John Minnelli. He thought, uh, you know, he, he thinks they're terrific. I heard a garbage truck driver this morning that uh, enjoyed the program. It's that too said he liked it, but also uh, suggested the two gentlemen that to host it were gay. <laughs> so I don't know what the, if it, that's a good thing or. It's two guys out of L.A. and they're just nice about everything. I mean, overly. everything. Overly nice and making sure they don't offend anyone. Very apologetic for everything, too. If this is the if this is the direction radio's going, we are doomed. Like, one guy apologizes for the other. Like, one guy will say something, and then the other guy's like, oh, well, you shouldn't say that. Be, you know, be nice. That's not, uh, that's, uh, I want to, you know, I'm sorry to anybody that was offended by the, What? What? Like, they played a sound clip this morning that uh, was supposed to mean one thing, but could have been interpreted as goofing on the garbage truck driver that said he enjoyed the show. And they immediately went like, sir, we just want you to know that wasn't directed at you. That was, um, you know, we're trying to show this other... Like, what? Just... <laughs> just tell the garbage truck driver to shut up, stick his head under that big blade that crushes the garbage, and die. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a little different. We're yeah. just a little different than the... Uh, I, I guess it's variety, Opie. Yeah, it's what you know. they call the spice of life. I get it. I'd like to apologize. I'm sure there's a, a bunch of people that listen to that show that hate us. Whatever. I want to apologize to... Jo what? John and... John and Jeff. John and Jeff for I Opie's uh, little outrage here. Uh, Opie, you shouldn't be so mean. Every morning I got to do what I got to do in that bathroom behind you, Bob Kelly, and... Uh, <laughs> And I have to, like, preface it with everybody in the office, like, oh, no, it's time to go listen to John and Jeff, because that's the only place that I will listen to them, and that's because I don't know how to turn, how to turn the speaker off I don't know how bathroom. to turn the speaker off in the bathroom, so I dread it every Does morning. Does it help you, uh, you with, your business, with your business? Sometimes I'm back so fast, you guys are like, what? Yeah, he leaves the office, <laughs> he comes back within a minute, and, and just throws, uh, like, the newspaper on the desk and goes, ugh. Today, I didn't even put my pants back together. I just walked in with my belt off and my <laughs> pants halfway down still. I don't even want to, like, you know, get myself together in the bathroom. I want to get out of that bathroom as, <laughs> as uh, soon as possible. Oh, God. What do they, what do they sound like? It's um, you, uh, They sound like two gay guys. I mean, it, you know, I don't know. I don't know what they're all about. I don't want to know what they're all about. But uh, when you listen, that's what I hear. Very nice. Just very sweet. They're sweet boys. They never gave their parents any any guff and growing they give, up. They 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 give some advice. Yeah. They feel uh, qualified to give people advice, and not even in a humorous way. I mean, just real like advice mm -hmm. to people. A woman who's calling up one day. See, and I got to say, they're probably going. Well, listen. Obviously, they know about our show and they're listening. There, yes, there are some mornings I cannot turn that off. It is like, how could you walk away from a f from flaming plane wreckage? You couldn't. You'd stand there and watch it. I, uh, I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm looking at their website. They look like they uh, should be in the Dateline house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris Hansen. You you're John and you're Jeff. You Sit down, have some cookies and lemonade. <laughs> you came here for sex with a minor. <laughs> All right, well... You brought wine coolers and licorice whips. The <laughs> uh, rest of the country has no clue what we're talking about. What? Oh, I'm we, sure they've heard enough radio just, just like it. Let's just put it this way. I'd rather drink two gallons of water <laughs> Get without, taking, headache and without go taking a wee. <laughs> All right, our phone number, 1-866-313-FREE. That's 1-866-313-FREE. 
It's uh, it's the ONA virus spreading across America. We got Bob Kelly in studio today. Jim Norton's up there in Chicago. He's going to be on Steve Dahl's show uh, this afternoon on WCKG. Yes. So if you're in the Chicago area, please check out little Jimmy Norton later on this what, afternoon. What club is he playing in Chicago? Uh, Zanies. Oh, Zanies. He's All of them. He's playing three different Zanies in three different days. The Zanies tour. No, I, that's what they make you do out, out in the Midwest. They make you do. They'll make you play every club because they want a good. Com- they don't get good comics. Yeah. So they just throw you at every club like gonna- one night. You're going to play every club I own Jim and my gonna basement. Be, he's going to be here on Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> at, at Zany's in... Uh, That's pretty much what it sounded like. Yeah. 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 He was just, just going to be there playing every place in Chicago. All right, let's say hi to Seth in Miami. Seth, what's up? What's up, buddy? Hey. Uh, is the show that precedes you... All right, hold on a minute. I'm getting... Hold on. I'm getting some uh, communique here that one of uh, the guys from uh, John and Jeff... Is that their name? John, Jeff and John? John and Jeff. John and Jeff went to Thailand alone. Hold on a minute, Seth. Guilt, guilty. Hold on a minute, Seth. Guilty. We have a whole theory on going to Thailand alone. There's no reason to. Well, unless you're Gary Glitter. <laughs> Gary Glitter. <laughs> or that other guy that claimed he killed Jean Benet Ramsey. We had a friend back in the day who would go to Vietnam with uh you know, by himself and then try to you know and they, uh, he's got look, pictures got with little little Thai my, girls. I gotta leave my post to, to see this. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Dude, man. John, it's oh, my god. John parties all night with the ladies. ladies. Uh, Pat Kong Beach in uh, Phuket, in Thailand. This girl could be thirteen years old, and he's got his arm around her little nothing of a waist. She looks like that little girl that threw that pointy hat into the helicopter in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> or the sniper in uh, Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what John's into? Going to Thailand? He's, he's into going to Thailand alone? All right. wow. Guilty. Well, I'll some... go out on a limb look, here. Let's <laughs> like, say if you're going to Thailand... Look, man, something's going on. If you're going to Thailand alone... Alone, you better actually... There's only there's two reasons. Okay. One, you're a pedophile looking to um, have sex with children uh, with impunity. Second, you're a buyer for rubber dog crap. <laughs> That's pretty much the only <laughs> things you do in Thailand. I want to make a deal. I need 800,000 cases of rubber dog crap. Dude, he's at a hooker bar. You see the other picture? They're all like girls in the background waiting of for course. Gates. This is the bar where they smoke out of places and shoot darts into balloons from straws, and and they're able to whistle at the same time, <laughs> whistle a happy tune. <laughs> Terrible. I, I never went to a place like that in Brazil with all my friends. Well, Brazil's different. You get women there. Yeah. yeah you, oh, you think those are men? No, no, no. I think they're kids. Oh, kids. You go to Thailand to have sex with kids. That's why people go alone. Men go alone to Thailand. They now... If you take uh, too many trips to Thailand, this happened to a businessman here in the United States. The the, the um, customs realized, hey, this guy's going to Thailand a lot by himself and going back and forth. And uh, finally, it, it raised the red flag with customs. They checked out his laptop that he had with him, loaded with pictures uh, of him and young kids and uh, sexual activity. So... They uh, obviously arrested him. Yeah, the, there's a picture here. You can see nothing but teenage girls all over the place. I mean, yeah. you know, like young, we're not we're not complaining, but they they look, in my opinion, that they're way underage. Some of these girls. Yeah. Uh, the stripper poles. The stripper there, poles. And, and, they're all wearing tank tops and tiny little shorts. And everyone knows it's it's for prostitution and for uh, pedophiles. It's it's, it's that's known what goes for on. It. It's just known for it. That's it. Um, does anybody have this guy's number? <laughs> you want to take a trip? I don't know what the hell you got. And it's on his about. website? <laughs> yeah, it's That's on his a website. ballsy move. Hey, go to this one, the middle picture right there, yeah. He has links to Dum Dum Lollipops. Look at the... <laughs> These are all hookers, man. <laughs> that is not just a, just a girl out on a Friday night looking to have a little fun. That is a hooker. Now, this morning I did hear a, uh, the caller that was on, the garbage truck driver, Say that although the two guys sounded gay, 
Um, he did hear one of them say once that he was into Asian uh, girls. Right. Well, this is the one uh, right I, here, I, Yeah, John. apparently, um, literally, Asian girls, <laughs> not <Yeah>. not women. <laughs> wow. All right, I have a newfound respect for them. All right, yeah. we need to know more about John and ha- Jeff. You got to understand, though, doesn't he have like some religious lady in one photo and then just a bunch of whores in the other? Well, you got to kind of mix it up a little just so it doesn't look then, so bad on the website. But he couldn't control himself and had to display uh, his vice on uh, the website. Wow. That's like, you know, if, if by night... I chose a life of crime and would like to just, I liked holding up gas stations with shotguns and, and a, a, a stocking over my head yeah. and then just put them on the website. It's like, here's what I do after work. Because I just can't I help rob, myself. I rob gas stations. I get off on this and I got to show the whole world. You know, you wouldn't, f- you wouldn't be crime. You'd fight crime, Anthony. I try. You could do anything at night. I try. Right, if I could ever leave my house, I would fight crime. Let's go to Derek in Massachusetts. Derek. Yeah. Hey. Hey, uh, if you think they're gay listening on the radio, I've, I've happened to catch them for the intro, and it's even worse. They're like, we're two guys that believe that if you're old enough to vote, you should drink. It's gay. All right. All right. It's kind of the obvious. Uh, what's up, E-Rock? There's lines like, we're two guys who wonder where the service went in customer service. It's just these little... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got that... You got shivers? Oh, I just got some. I just got some douchey. <laughs> we are here to help the Vietnamese because inside every gook there is an American trying to get out. It's a hardball world, son. We've got to try to keep our heads until this peace craze blows over. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Some kind of sick joke? Don't you love your country? Yes, sir. <laughs> How about getting with the program? Why don't you jump on the team and come on in for the big win? <laughs> Iraq's finding something over there. What do you got, Iraq? No, we're, we're trying to find the promos. Though. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would like to hear one John and Jeff promo before we move on. I yeah. love you. Long time. He's so horny. Let's say hi to John in Connecticut. John, what's up? Hey, how you doing over there? Hey, John. Hey, man. Uh, that show you're talking about is absolutely horrible. They tell you that you shouldn't get married until you're, you're 30. Uh, there's 50 rules you should have before you marry the girl. It's awful. I'll, I'll tell you something, though. People seem to know what they're talking about. Yeah. See, this is one of those situations where it could be one of those shows. Look, let me just tell you something. Where you got to listen because it's so bad. <laughs> it's not my cup of tea. No. All right? No. It's not my cup of tea. It's 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 the furthest from what we do on the radio. Yeah. Very mm-hmm. safe discussions about everything. Yeah. They actually talked about the hold your we for a we thing like we did yesterday and made it boring. How do you make death audio boring? I know. How do you make death audio boring? Kills a listener and, uh, I don't know, just didn't really hold my interest. All right. And they give advice. Like there's a a woman called up about uh, problems she was having with her husband. And, and, I mean, it was really like it could have really been fun, a fun conversation. Because apparently the guy she was married to was a real bastard and just... I treat her like crap and she gave some examples and they were like what you, you have to get away from this man just lee it's time to move on instead of like well what was it like when he'd like you know bring another chick home and punch you in the face you know it was that kind of like wild stuff going on oh, fun we could have had yeah oh yeah absolutely hey uh you got some john jeff promos can't get enough of the john jeff today thank god uh if you're just tuning in these are the guys that are on us uh before us here in New York City, and yeah. uh, they're a little too nice for my taste. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. But there's one thing about you know being nice, and another about avoiding entertainment if it comes across your transom. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> they, they don't want any controversy. They had a, a conversation about a um, a woman who was still living with her ex husband in the same house weird condition and uh, one of the guys asked well what what happens if you you know bring home a guy how does that work and the other one went hey hey it's a bit of a personal question to be asking and you know if you're being sarcastic or something it's kind of funny he was in all seriousness telling this guy hey this could get entertaining if we pursue this line of questioning please stop it immediately <laughs> well, well we got a promo from their fine radio a, a, show. Ho- a what a promo. Oh, promo. Promo, yes. <laughs> Do the 
the mature and graphic subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. The John and Chuck Show. We're two guys who think poor people cannot afford to have kids. We're two guys who wonder what happened to the service in customer service. We're two guys who think shoplifters should be caged like animals in full view of customers. The John and Chuck Show. Ugh. Know what the difference is? Our listeners are the shoplifters. <laughs> And they're the caged animals. Do they think that's, like, good? Cutesy? What are they going uh, for there? Those I, guys are just nice. Those I, are nice. Hu- There's actually nice human beings in the world, Opie. No. <laughs> These guys are just really nice guys trying to just be nice. And, <laughs> and hey, that's a little personal. And you guys, like, you scumbag, drag it out of her. A little personal? <laughs> How about your pictures of, of, of uh, you are in Thailand with your arm around a what appears to be a youngster. Oh, but maybe he's actually giving 35 cents a day to that little youngster. Oh, you think you bought her? Yeah, maybe he's actually uh, through a uh, Christianity program. You can sponsor a child. You can sponsor. And have sex. Yes. For 35 for the price of a cup of coffee cup of at coffee. Starbucks, you can have sex. We have another one? The John and Jeff John Show. And Jeff Show. The John and Jeff Show. We're two guys who think there should be a federal investigation into the long lines at the post office. We're two guys who think it should be a felony if your French fries are cold at the drive-thru. We're two guys who think a woman should give a man a gift after getting engaged. The John and Jeff Show. The John and Jeff, John and Jeff Show. All right. <laughs> 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 Gotta go see a sign. Yeah. All right. Are they... All right. It's all true. Are, are they being serious or dude, are they dude. goofing? I would love to say because if they were goofing, so, it, this would be a great like yeah. Because if bit, you, a if great you twist act, it a, a little great... bit, that could be a nice goof promo. But it, yeah, they're serious, right? Yeah. You think they sit around and go, "We're two guys." Hmm. Let's we're let's play guys. up the two guy angle. We're two, we're guys. two guys, and it's got to be relatable. Um, like, what do people not like to do? Hang out on lines at the post office. We're oh, two guys. guys. Okay, post office, long lines. We're two guys that... Uh, two guys uh, like to uh, open the long, door. Long lines at the post office, they should investigate that. Right. All right. If I hold the door, you should say thank you. Good. Good. A lot of people Good. hold the door and Good. don't get a thank you. Yes. That's it. We're two guys. Ooh. We're two guys that'll give you the courtesy of a reach around. Hello, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god! And these guys look exactly the same too. Yeah, they look like twins. They're generic. Uh, well, I'm sure the listeners will have some uh, "We're Two Guys" uh, ideas for them for their next promo, <laughs> 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 just to show you the difference in the two shows. Right? Maybe we can. Here do- it comes. Maybe we can uh, play up the two guys. Steve, throw together a couple of two we're two guys promos. Yeah, could you? Where's Steve? <laughs> yeah, Steve will throw together an Opie and Anthony version of the two guys promo. And Steve, just use your normal psychopathic mind. <laughs> we're two guys. Full of <laughs> woman abuse and beatings. and We're two guys that have no problem jumping on a homeless man's cake and then openly laugh at him. We're two guys that take a wiffle ball bat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's Steve? You mean just do the normal? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Run-of-the-mill normal Steve stuff. <laughs> done done to the we're two guys thing. We're blatantly ripping off uh, John and uh, Jeff. Do we have another example? Okay. The John, and Jeff Show. the John and Jeff Show. We're two guys who think women who keep their maiden names in marriage are high maintenance. We're two guys who think DNA tests should be mandatory before a man's name goes on a birth certificate. We're two guys who think nobody should get married before the age of 30. The John and Jeff Show. The John and, the John John and Jeff Show. Show. Look, it, <laughs> I don't know if they're goofing or if they're serious. Yeah, I know. Serious. I know. You're serious. D- dude, your normal reflex, it's like reaching into a fire. Your normal reflex is to pull away. See, that's what you're doing. Your normal reflex is to think this cannot possibly be serious. But please. It is serious, right? Yes, it, it, it is serious. These guys are absolutely serious. <laughs> yes. I don't like the way he said maintenance. <laughs> Mainten- yes, maintenance. I really want well, maintenance. Let's go to uh, Nico and D. Our high maintenance. 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 Hey, how about uh, uh, we're two guys who think that Ike shouldn't have been so easy on Tina. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's our two guys. That's it. They were very good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, you got another one? 
Two guys that like an occasional sprinkle of sugar on our oatmeal. Whoa! <laughs> they are Here comes wild. The funny. Uh, Getting those frequent flyer miles to some Southeast Asian crap hole. <laughs> We're two guys that don't use sweetener in our coffee. Uh, Bob, Bob is right in a way. Though. Wild. They're just two nice guys trying to carve their own place in radio. Yeah, yeah we got we got to bash them. Of course Why? we Do have to. Why? One trying to make enough money to go to Thailand three times a year right. to, to have sex with thirteen year olds. <laughs> well, we don't know. You guys are trying to. You guys are party poopers. Is what you are. <laughs> I know. Listen to us. You know how much money it costs to go to Thailand? I mean, granted, the women are cheap. Yeah. You bet, once you get there, little, the... you can go there and get a woman for like a, a box. Uh, Uncle Ben. <laughs> Officially, we have no idea why he goes to Thailand. Right, Bob Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes there because of the kids. There are plenty of reasons. But Anthony, during the break, was talking about, you know, just imagine the, the, the plane ride to uh, the flight to <laughs> Thailand. You just can't wait. You're just dying on that plane. You have all your you have all your overheads already in your lap, ready to go. <laughs> right. you're, not, you're not taking anything. You didn't even you didn't even pack like a carry like a check in. You everything's carried. Carry on, so you can fly Carry right, on, to the, exactly. right to the little rickshaw. And two hours into the flight, it's on your lap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the steward ha has to say, hey, look, man, we got 12 hours to go. You might want to relax. Yeah, I can't relax. You go into the bathroom and just get into shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> 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 so you just get right in that rickshaw, fly to the little house of house of dragons. The whatever house, yeah, whatever, whatever it's called. The house of Hua. I actually went to one in San Francisco, uh, like a little little tiny geisha place like that. And yeah. There's a big wooden dragon door. Of course there and is. You, you knock on it, and you hear all these little women he -he -he, giggling. They open it, and it's like gong. And there's around 35 Asian women mm -hmm. be behind the door. And you get to pick all of them. And there's one, like at the end, there's like one hot like white chick. Really, just, just a in case smoking you're... white chick. So you're kind of scanning, and they're all like perking up. And then you get to the white chick, you like her, and they go. Uh, they all get pissed because the white chick gets. I picked knew all the it. Time. White chick always gets Bobby. Now yeah. we have to go back to cook hey, fish. Hey, we're two guys that hate when <laughs> cut us off in traffic. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Bob in Connecticut. Bob. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, uh, I wanted to say, uh, how about this one for the John Jeff guy? We're two guys that think kissing girls is gross. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck that, guys. That can be the next one. <laughs> We're two guys that still believe you can get cooties from girls. <laughs> Let's go to Scam. Scam, what's up? What up, boys? Hey. We're two guys that think Nicole Brown Simpson deserved it. Ooh. All right. Wow. Well, all right. Let's go to Justin on Long Island. Justin, what's up? What's up, boys? How you doing? Hey. Hey, uh, we're two guys who think it's not gay if you don't push back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Redding from Whackbag. Redding. Hey, it's John Jeff with you. Hey. Hey, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's shit. I'm punching out. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, did he choke. Wow, and he swore. He was all eager and uh, da, 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 weird. He was, he was so excited to be on the air. He, he forgot the he forgot the whole weird two guys like concept. Yeah. And then his bl his brain his brain went blank. But you know because he, oh. he was rehearsing the character too much. <laughs> yeah, right. like, where honey? But where, what about this honey? Where where to? No, it's too I'll much. do that. Where John and Jeff? And then wait, what's the bit? <laughs> oh damn! I got excited. He was a good one. Let, yeah. Let's go to uh, to Peter in the Bronx. Peter. Yeah, what's up, buddy? What's going on, guys? Hey. We're two guys that'll drink as much water as we want to. Uh, we need one good one before we go to break. Jeff in Florida. Jeff. Hey, you can come through and say we're actually a couple of guys that thought Hitler had some good ideas. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, yeah. Wow. And Brad, what's up? How about we're two guys that eat our handheld after we break our knee, man? <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> well, Can we get the Bob Kelly audio. <laughs> hold, my, hold my hand. Hold my hand. Hold my, hold my hand. 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 You know the worst part about the whole. <laughs> you want to eat me? You want Ah. Oops, my finger hit the wrong button. Ah. Uh, let's, ah. let's go to Matt in Ohio. Matt, what's up? 
We're a few guys that think puberty is overrated. Punch it out, guys. Uh, let's go to Lead Belly. Lead Belly. Hey, FreeFMFans.com, guys. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, we're two guys that laughed at Andrea Yates. Mm. 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 I'm not like going to crash him or oh, well, well. laugh or nothing. I guess we'll have to take a break now. <sighs> yeah. Uh, we we're having fun with that, but... Um... Well, that's fun. Oh, well, that was fun. The two guys concept. Could have done it all morning until yeah. that last call. Just I'll tell you, though, the not, <laughs> none are oh, better than the actual good. ones. Regroup and do something else after the break. What? None better than the real ones. Yeah, you got one more real one? All right, here's Z-Rock. Rocking your radio live all night long, party people, it is the John and Jeff Show, third shift, free for all. And we're two guys who aren't afraid to read our emails live on the air. And if you have an email for the John and Jeff show, go to our website. It's johnjeff.com. J O H J E F. Yeah, you. Well, hey, they said it. That's all. You oh, will be that. now. <laughs> oh, they no. said it, not me. Oh, oh boy. You need to change Look, that promo. <laughs> I am. I am definitely too scared to read my email. I on know. The, on the air. You dummies. We're afraid, and supposedly these people like us. <laughs> Let's go to Chad in Indiana. Chad, what's up? We're two guys who like to bomb frat houses with marshmallows. All right. Ah, little ah, callback. Ah, 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 fraternity ah, ah, hazing right. days. <laughs> you know, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John and Jeff, they're just terrific. That's they're on funny. before us. Not at all. What our... show are you talking about? What? John and Jeff. They're oh. just They're just terrific. It's a scream. I was lucky. Literally, today. you scream. <laughs> I was lucky today when I had to do my thing. Yeah, uh, they were in commercial break. When you had to take care of your business so that I you do able, every morning, like I, clockwork. I was able to relax uh, this morning in there, and then I got locked in because the handle broke, and handle no one came cared. Up, yeah. No one came to get me. I'm just sitting there whistling and stuff. It was worse than <laughs> Saw. <laughs> Obi was locked in the bathroom. The handle fell off, and that awful show was on. He'd, he'd have rather cut his arm off <laughs> than listen. I just started sweating. I'm, I'm like, they're going to they're gonna know I'm in here eventually, hopefully before John and Jeff come back from a commercial break. <laughs> Ugh, they're awful. Obi, John and Jeff are on. And the handle is now off the bathroom door. You have two choices. You can break the mirror and slice your own throat or listen to John and Jeff. I'll cut my own throat. We can't get enough of the awfulness that is John and Jeff, by the way. That's how they get listeners. I, me and Florentine would drive around at night because they were on a, a satellite radio a simulcast and we could not stop listening. We're, we're not sure still if this is a bit... Or, or they're serious because we can't comprehend this show being a serious show. They're on before us in New York. I think they're on before us in Chicago and a couple other cities. But uh, they're out of L.A. and they're just they're just terrific. What was the the John and Jeff bit of the day today? There, Iraq. This morning they were discussing um, a, a unionizing people who check out in supermarkets, and they were doing the pros and cons one versus the other. One guy was for unions. He grew up in a union household. The other guy was saying, how much talent does it take to put stuff in a bag? They want to start a union as far as... Wait, wait, wait. I, sorry, I as totally as not at all. Cash registers or the or the people you you meet after you're uh, paying your your food bill? The cash, the cashiers. The out cashiers. Out in California, they want to start a union. Uh-huh. And they were arguing the pros and cons of starting a union for cash Did one registers. take one side and one take the other? Yes, they did. Dynamic. Wow. This went on for two Compelling. hours. That's fodder for chat. Two hours. <laughs> well, oh my can we hear a John and Jeff promo? They're just just the greatest thing. Yeah, we love their promos. Here we go. Due to the mature and graphic subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Yeah, the John, 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 John and Jeff show. We're two guys who think poor people cannot afford to have kids. We're two guys who wonder what happened to the service in customer service. We're two guys who think shoplifters should be caged like animals in full view of customers. The John and John, 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 John show. He said, well, you know, we don't have to freeze his whole body. We can freeze his head. 
<laughs> we're two guys. Just wow. Well, maybe you know, maybe they fell short with that promo. I know I said cash registers instead of cashiers. They want to un- start a union. You cash know, I said cash <laughs> registers. I know. Cash but registers. People have to wash their hands before they touch our buttons. <laughs> Holding picket signs in their little drawer mouths. <laughs> we want. We need better pay. <laughs> I'm like, thank God these two in front of me, they just don't listen uh, in general. I was I was getting away with that one until instant feedback jumped on. Oh, they won't let you get away. All right, anyway, let's get another John and Jeff promo out there for everybody. The John and Jeff, John and Jeff Show. Show. The John and Jeff Show. We're two guys who think there should be a federal investigation into the long lines at the post office. We're two guys who think it should be a felony if your french fries are cold at the drive-thru. We're two guys who think a woman should give a man a gift after getting engaged. The John and Jeff Show. Hi, gum. Is this real, or are they doing a Yeah, we can't show? figure it out. How about we're two guys uh, that are not permitted to marry in every state? <laughs> <laughs> we're two guys that are fighting to adopt children together. <laughs> wow. Does, am I the only one that picks it up, especially in the one voice? Well, wow. uh, listeners have picked it up. I, I was talking about a show I was listening to during the other morning, and um, a garbage truck driver called and said, Look, I, I listen to you guys. But I, I think you're gay. And they went, hey, now, you know, I, I'm married. One guy's married, and the other guy likes Asian girls. He likes to go to Thailand. But, but we found <laughs> out he flies solo to Thailand, and there's pictures up on the web of him with some Thailand girls. Now, Jimmy, you know what? Unfortunately, Jimmy was not here when we really needed him, which I was know. Friday. Uh, go to the go to the uh, the picture of him in the bar. Are get, these, get that picture of him with these, this girl, Jimmy. Are these local women out on a out just having a few drinks for happy hour after after a tough day at the office, or, that or are picture, these underage prostitutes? That picture has kid toucher written all over it. What do you think? Seriously, I, I, don't even go for the goof. What I'm do you really think? Absolutely looking. That is, a, of course, that's probably a prostitute. You can tell by the way he affectionately has his arm. Like, like, he's a creep. He's a he looks guy. like the guy they hauled back from there. Uh, the, uh, John yes. He looks like John Carr. Or Iraq in 15 years. <laughs> the man's an ass. And he's got he's wearing an awful red shirt, and he has his arm around her waist. And the telltale sign is she has both arms in front of her like she's so used to this. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. She's used to having yeah. a strange American Yeah, she doesn't want her. any affection. She just wants to, you know, pay, pay her phone bill. She has a yeah. waist that's <laughs> about as big as your arm. Right. Uh, she's got... Barely any um, but, but look at the rest, rest to speak of. Look at the rest of the bar. It's just filled with uh, just young girls. This I guy. Mean, nothing wrong with that, but uh, he's making this look like he just happened to be at a local bar in Thailand. Yes, yeah, strip club. Apparently, he likes going to Thailand. And again, we've said it before. If you're a guy and you're flying solo to Thailand, you're into some stuff. Yeah. And you know what? This picture might be on the website to throw everyone off the track. Sure. Off, off the. Think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at her neck. It almost looks like she has what could be an Adam's apple from the side. I, I'm, I'm not saying she's a tranny. Dare to dream, but, Jimmy. Well, in Thailand, the Asian trannies are notoriously convincing. That, that could absolutely. This be. picture is to throw everyone off the scent, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of what? Uh, Something worse? Uh, really? Uh, oh, you think uh, the the other way? Uh, Boys. I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know about, either. I don't know any, uh, anything about John's uh, life there. So, Are you guessing, though, that if that picture were accurate, his date would be propped up on his shoulder and they'd both be wearing baseball hats and waving? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we met in the Big Brother picture. Yeah, show him another picture. Because <laughs> Jim's an expert on this. Yeah. Show him, uh, yeah, like that picture. Show him Exhibit A. This is uh, more pictures from the John and Jeff website. Him in a... In a Not bar in Thailand. Apparently, they're getting a lot of hits right now. Yeah, they're you dumb boy. Listeners. Are we Let helping us do our this? job? Why are we helping job. this program? Personally, I think that those are just uh, they're not local girls, just front photos. They're for the they're for fronts. Fronts. What do you mean? Like keeping a picture of uh, kids that aren't yours in your uh, in your thing on your office desk. So you look like a family man. I think that's more like just so people think, wow, you went out and met some chicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you? When you know what you're going to Thailand for. Of course. But let's uh, make it perfectly clear. We have no effing idea what John not. does in Thailand. I have no idea, but I guarantee you this. He would not let anybody look at his uh, laptop. I guarantee you that hard drive. 
is rigged with explosives. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all he has to do, he carries around on his key fob with his, with his remote to open his car doors. It's, Anywhere he is in the country, he can hit it, and his hard drive explodes. It's one lousy key, the period key. <laughs> yeah. You, you hit that, it's all whole hard drive fries. Yes, officer? What, what, is this, what is this file here? 13 underscore. I don't touch that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we hear another John and Jeff promo? Uh, this show is just terrific. We listen to it every morning, getting ready for the Opie and Anthony show. Here's another promo for the John and Jeff show. The John and Jeff Show. We're two guys who think women who keep their maiden names in marriage are high maintenance. We're two guys who think DNA tests should be mandatory before a man's name goes on a birth certificate. We're two guys who think nobody should get married before the age of 30. The John and Jeff Show. The John and Jeff Show. Jimmy, are you high maintenance? <laughs> Anyone that says that first M in maintenance should have their face slapped. Maintenance. Maintenance. <laughs> well, they know what two guys should be about. We're two guys that think a flight to Thailand is much too long. <laughs> We're two guys that think the age of consent should be nine. Creeps. <laughs> 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 well... I don't like the way they're trying to be boys. Like, this is what annoys me. It's like, we're two guys who think you shouldn't be married before you're 30. It's like, you L.A. Idiot. That's your idea of being, like, maverick men. Right. You know? Yeah, they're right on the edge. We're two guys who think you should high-five instead of shaking hands. Oh, God. Stop it. Keep them away from the wheel. Calm down. Nuts. <laughs> What's your New Year's Eve like, pal? <laughs> <laughs> And that just means they're getting married because it's the thing to do instead of maybe you're you're married to someone you really, really are into that's a hot piece of ass and giving you everything you want and you have a very healthy relationship. They're, right. They're basically saying, ah, got to get married eventually because yeah. it's the thing to do. Time's, time's ticking. All right. Uh, well, we're two guys as well. We want to follow the lead of the John and Jeff program. And uh, Steve and his crack staff came up with this. I bet it sounds just like their promo. Oh, it's it's exactly like their promo, Jimmy. Ooh. The Opie and Anthony Show. <laughs> it's the Opie oh. and Anthony Show. Two guys who think that your fat ass is the reason that no one loves you and no one ever will. Two guys who think that if your kid has a birth defect, you should burn it and start over. <laughs> guys who better have supper waiting for them when they get home or else <laughs> <laughs> two guys <laughs> we think the Opie and Anthony show the Opie and Anthony, Opie and Anthony, show. Anthony show of course Steve has to hit a woman uh, in a oh, promo excellent it's so refreshing to do, hear that again can you do one show promo where you're not hitting a woman please just one the women want to love this show I know they do wait this coming from the guy that did an hour long break on uh what was it called? What? The, uh, what? What? the thing. Uh, what? what was it? What? what were you guys talking about on what? Friday? What? There was an hour long what? break. You got them all what? On, <laughs> what? On misogynistic. What? There was that term. What? The Guido slap or what, what was it? Oh, oh, Goonhand. 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 Goon hand. The Goonhand. There was an that was hour Bob long Kelly. break. I'm talking about how handing. sometimes, you know, he goes, ah, I wouldn't hit a woman, but sometimes you got to give her the goon hand. It's where you just grab her little, the fat under her arm <laughs> and muscle it around and say, stop making a scene. Because sometimes you got a goon hander. Like, wow. Goon hand. How great is that? It leaves four little bruises on one side, one big one on the inside. Yeah. Someone and, should goon hand Bob's arm the next time he grabs for Lay's potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that term is different in black relationships. <laughs> oh. Listen to the replay. I made the joke. <laughs> it got a bell and everything. I should have had more faith. Of course. Ah, uh, well. Steve, you got to make a couple more of those. Uh, I certainly will. <laughs> so there you go. We can't get enough of John and Jeff on here before us in New York City. We would listen to them. It's, it's, it's like you could not listen to them. You can't. Like, this is not... Two guys who really think they're being funny. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I've listened and and thought it was a goof, but then you realize it, 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 day after day that they're doing the same thing. No bit lasts this long. Not even one of ours. And uh, it's serious. And it's become a thing every morning where I have to go in that bathroom and they're piping the John and Jeff show in and I got to take care of what I got to take care of. And it's just awful. Here's an actual conversation I heard a little bit of when I was driving in. They were doing their self-help thing or, or help 
line where people call in and they give them a little help. They're in sticky situations. They help out with their knowledge. And it's serious. So this woman called up and said she was uh, breaking up from uh, her boyfriend or husband or something, some kind of divorce or breakup. They, they lived together. But they were still living together. They were broken up, yet for the time being still living together. So one of them said, that must be a little awkward when either one of you bring uh, somebody, a guy or a girl, home. And the other guy said, hey, hey. That's getting a little personal. Let's stick to the subject at hand. <laughs> and wasn't kidding and didn't get punched in the face by the other guy. And then they just continued talking about relationships and how that should be handled. I was stunned. What what question was a little personal? I missed it. Was it was it when he said, uh, how old was your date in Thailand? <laughs> yeah. Hey, now, well. now, hey, that's a little personal. Ten. <laughs> oh, what creeps. We're still waiting, by the way, for one person to call up and tell us that they went to Thailand for something legit. One lousy person out there. I told you. We're not going to find the one. Only other, We're not going to find one. The, there's one other reason. If you're the representative for sales for a novelty shop that buys rubber dog dew, <laughs> that's the only reason you fly to Thailand. You go to the warehouse, you look and go, this is some of the best rubber dog poop I've ever seen in my life. Give me 20 plane loads, I'm going to get a raise. Or you're a wicker salesman. Wicker. We, we decided. Hi, I'm with Pier 1 Imports, right. and uh, we're looking for wicker. I hear you make it, and I want to have sex with somebody underage. Can you rig that up? Because <laughs> they're probably doing it too. <laughs> By the way, the phones are lit with people... Uh trying to defend why they go to Thailand because I'm sure they got spouses listening <laughs> to, this, to the show. All right, we need some rulings. All right. This guy goes to Thailand because he works for the airline. Uh, well, do you get off the plane? He if does... you step off the aircraft... All right, let me ask real fast. Then you're a kid toucher. <laughs> Sir? Sir? Hello. Hello, I got you. You go to Thailand because you work for the airlines? Yeah, I, I don't anymore. I, I quit the airlines, but uh, we used to go. What happens is... We, uh, a mechanic would have to fly with the aircraft. Yeah. And it, it would stay on the ground for about 12 hours. And uh, you do, like, uh, you know, routine checks on the plane. And uh, they would put you up in a resort. So you're off well, the plane in Thailand, Thailand, right? Off the plane in Thailand. Pedophile! <laughs> Good toucher. <laughs> Moving on. Let's go to Joe in New York. Joe, what's up? Hey, what's going on, boys? Listen, uh, I was uh, in the Marines from 90 to 96. All right. We went to Thailand in uh, 1993. Got four days of liberty in Patia Beach. And, uh, you know, everybody gets off the ship. Everybody gets lit. Well, we find one of our buddies, Jeremy, in a bar, and he's making out with this uh, apparently young lady, and we're looking at her neck, and she got an Adam's apple the size of a peach pit. <laughs> and uh, we're like, you know, Jeremy, why don't you get, check under her trunk before you go any further? Sure enough, he reaches under her skirt, and he's holding a tree trunk, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Please tell me y'all shot her and uh, dragged her out and buried her somewhere. They call them they call them Benny boys over there, and a lot of them are convincing looking. I mean, really, really got to look close or check under their skirt, man. Because and that's acting. where uh, Sirius goes to get their employees. So, uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. A little inside I'll joke. Punch it All out. right, uh, let's go to Paula from Connecticut. Paula. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I want to say I love your show. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. That means I you got wanna... a problem with us. That's no, all, that's how it always you. starts. <laughs> First, I want to tell you I really do enjoy what but... you do. But I want to have Jimmy's baby. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> I went to Thailand about 15 years ago. You what? I went to Thailand about 15 years ago. For yeah. well, what reason? Well, my ex-husband was in the military, and I went over there and met the submarine that he was on. And uh, we had two days there, and let me tell you, it was something. Wow, I'm serious. We got lots of Thai sticks when we were there. Ah, a lot of okay, so drugs. So, yeah, we got a lot of that. Don't do that anymore. But, uh, yeah, we went to the sex clubs, my husband and I, and uh, they're like 12- and 13-year-olds doing sex acts and yeah. having a good, t you know, yeah. that's pretty common over there. Yeah, we, uh, we, we know. So uh, military seems to be yeah. maybe be an excuse yes. to be yeah, there. I have, but right. I think there's shenanigans going on anyway. Of course. The All right, hookers, though. Hey, oh, do we have uh, Thailand's um, exports? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I have no idea. What is Thailand... Uh, well, they're into some of the products they make. Well, they got rice, textiles, footwear. Textiles. What are textiles? That is so vague. I picture textiles being like, like big things of wool. 
<laughs> like just a big square block of wool. Here, we're exporting this. Call it a textile. I don't know. Yeah. I learned about it in school. Their exports. Everyone exports textiles, by the way. Every country, when I was going to school, uh, what are their exports? Well, there's textiles. Yeah. Textiles. Textiles. Yeah, it sounds so... I don't know. Important. Yeah. Sounds like an important export. It's 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 fake duty. Why export it when every country has them? Just keep your own textiles. What? Could you? If, if they have textiles and we have textiles, why are two ships passing each other going in opposite directions, both carrying textiles? textiles. Why didn't they stay where they were? <laughs> Thank you, Brian Regan. <laughs> See, that's his lager joke that we reworked for this uh, part of the program. Our textile bit. <laughs> What else? Uh, footwear, fishery footwear. products. Fishery. Uh, rubber, jewelry, and electrical appliances. You know everything is crap, though. It's not like fishing equipment. It's a stick with a string on it and a homemade hook. Right. Hey, here's Joe from New York. He's gone to Thailand uh, on vacation four or five times. Four or five times. There's another guy calling up, but he didn't want to wait through the break. He's, he says uh, the reason a lot of people go to Thailand, bird watching. What? Oh, sure. Exactly. Sure they do. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Oh, hey. How you doing, guys? Hey. Hey, listen. Um, I'll tell you the story quick. I've been, I've been to Thailand about four, probably about four or five times. I've always been with uh, with girlfriends or my wife. I took my wife. But, I like, on a serious note, there's a lot of good stuff there in terms of vacation. Like, the food kicks ass. And, is like, if you're into, like, backpacking, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> backpacking. Yeah, there's a certain type of backpacking that they do. No there. offense, Joe, but come on. I mean, listen, I got a story for you. Real Go to the Adirondacks if you want to backpack. Yeah, no kidding. In Thailand. <laughs> the great part about backpacking in Thailand is nude boys all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. Let me tell you a story or what? Uh, oh, oh, hey! hey. Yeah, all right. All right, it's the Joe Show. All right. You ready? Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Joe. All let's, right. Let's hear your story. All right, here it goes. The first time I went. Eric, what's going on today? Teach him a lesson. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let him patient. start his story, and then bam. <laughs> Eric, why do you go to Thailand? I go there about once a year. I try to go twice a year, actually, for uh, fights, uh, Muay Thai tournaments. Yeah. Ah. I've been going for about six or seven years. Now. Really? It's a, <laughs> it's a pretty good time. I like going over there. It's, uh, competition's pretty good, and... And the exposure is pretty good if you're trying to make it professional and fighting. Got the exposure, and that's good. the reason you go to Thailand, right? That's the reason I go. All right. Well, there there are reasons. And know what's great about all these phone say. calls? There's like a guilt associated with the reason why they go to Thailand. Yeah. Hey, this is hey, why look, I go. Man. Hey, hey. I I know what you're talking about. I see it myself, but I strictly go for some hand to hand uh, combat. Eric, do you feel a little odd when you go? Like when you're going through customs, that people are kind of looking at you weird. Well, there's an awful lot of American uh, men walking around with young Thai boys. That's what bothers me. Really? Yeah, unfortunately. It, it's it's right in the open, right? Well, it's tough to tell sometimes that they're walking around with young boys and young girls because they all kind of look the same. Yeah. How long of a flight is it? Oh, Jesus Christ. It's uh, it's long. It's like 13 hours. We, we did a whole bit on Friday about, uh, you know, the pedophiles are going over there. Oh, that must be the longest things. flight ever. And they're on that long flight. Just They're all worked up into a frenzy. They're Good. frothing. <laughs> frothing at the <laughs> mouth. Just going, how long have we been? 15 minutes in the air. What do we say? The guy Jesus. has his carry-on luggage on his lap. It's just sitting uh, there waiting. Uh, sir, we just took off. We still have 12 and a half hours to go. I'll hold this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Miss, when will we be landing? Shortly, uh, we're we're still on the taxiway here at LAX. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. Thanks. Right, just, thank just can't wait. Oh, like a kid waiting to go to Disney. <laughs> right. Hi, right, when? When is it? Well, we're not going until Easter break. It's too long. <laughs> when? Uh, Creeps. Uh, just creepy guys. A lot of them do get busted, right? Because their computers, when they're coming back over, they, yeah. why, why don't they just mail the porn home? Well, they're really taking that. You put porno through the mail, you get uh, in trouble. And I'm thinking if you're sending a package from Thailand <laughs> to your house after being in Thailand, there could be perhaps a problem. I think if the government is checking your mail, I think the I think they're checking stuff coming from like uh, the Middle East and Thailand. Yeah, Thailand too. That's about it. So give us a call if you go to Thailand and tell us why you go there, why you have to, Good wink, luck. wink, nudge, nudge, go to Thailand. 
Hey, uh, John and Jeff, can't get enough of these guys. Who can? Every, everybody. Huh? Oh, they just stink. You think we suck? Oh, listen to the show before us. <laughs> They're so nice. It makes nice. us feel much better about ourselves. Everything is nice, and every caller is contributing, and there's not one bet. Look, you know, maybe maybe we're a little overzealous with the way we treat our callers and hang up on them and stuff like that. Uh, but they will they will refuse to hang up on anybody, no matter how inane the call is. Well, I believe this morning I heard somebody who works in a vitamin factory talk about making vitamins. Yeah, and they wouldn't let this guy go. They're asking him vitamin questions, not even like interesting vitamin questions, if there are any. I was going to say, give me one interesting I can't. vitamin question. I can't. What's that vitamin a girl takes that makes her pass out with her mouth wide open? <laughs> Roofie. <laughs> yeah. Do you make roofies? The old vitamin R. <laughs> but they were just talking to this guy, and the guy wasn't even, it wasn't even an exciting delivery of his dull subject matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was double dull. And they kept him on, and... Well, if you don't know the John Jeff show, because uh, not all the cities that we're on, you know, carry the show. Oh, how is that? Consider yourself happening? very lucky. Um, <clears throat> they're very nice. <laughs> they're a nice show. They're nice guys trying to like carve out their niche in this awful business we call radio. But we're convinced now, and believe me, this is just our opinion based on small clues that we've picked up on. And uh, this in no way is a reflection of the reality because we just don't know what these guys are into, what they're all about. But uh, first instinct that I get is that um, one of them sounds kind of gay and the other one uh, visits Thailand. So I, uh, I, I believe people that go to Thailand... Um, our kid touchers. <laughs> Are you saying it should be called the Bottom and Pedo Show? <laughs> Sloppy party bottom. We're obsessed with Thailand. We can't. <laughs> yesterday we we took phone calls from people. We just wanted one person to call up and and give us a legit reason why you had to go to Thailand. And and all of them were very very shady. Well, and shady. Sketchy. It could go. It could go either way. It could go both ways. You could go for this business, but end up you know in one of those bars brothels whatever they are someone said their hiking is really good yeah it's great hiking well america has really? some fine spots to hike in as well you ever see the uh, southwest <laughs> some great hiking in the southwest the beautiful Adirondacks. country yeah sorry you're not going to find any kids unless you find the lost brady kids down there in the grand canyon <laughs> to ravage but <laughs> so they're a very nice show you want to hear some audio of uh, john and jeff who wouldn't this is our latest obsession, by the way. We get obsessed very easily on this show. Here's John and Jeff talking to a female caller a mere few hours ago. Mm -hmm. you Can I ask a question, too, for you guys on um, yeah. the show? Like, thanks so much for doing audio nuggets and everything. That's cool. What's audio nuggets? What's audio nuggets, E-Rock? Anytime, like what we do, anytime that we play audio of something from the news or uh, entertainment, they call it an audio nugget. Oh, we should come up with a clever name for any time we play audio. Isn't this an audio nugget? How that weird. This one. is a paradox. We're playing an audio nugget of someone talking about their audio nugget. <laughs> audio you know what this, nugget. This is, a oh nugget. this is a nugget of something you wouldn't want to track on your living room rug. Exactly. <laughs> this is the kind of nugget that uh, makes you have to use extra paper. <laughs> An audio nugget. Everything is so just nice. <laughs> this isn't a nugget. It's an audio log. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you use the word nugget in your life, you're just a nice person. A nugget. <laughs> let's let's make a list of words only nice people use. This type of audio nugget gives you what they call splashback. <laughs> 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 All right, listen. Dan, uh, you're on the job today. Words only nice people use. This audio nugget is the embarrassing type that sometimes when you lift the lid, it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> it should be called an audio floater. <laughs> Give me another word only nice people use. Mm -hmm. Only nice people. Um, it's going to be a word. Let me ask you a question. Because nugget, 
Is nugget the nice word, or is it audio nugget that makes it nice? It, the whole thing. Just Have you ever used adorable. the word nugget? Because nugget is like, oh, you know, you you refer to something as a a, a nugget, like a a piece of. I popped the nugget. Is the only time we've used nugget. Right. And that's not a good thing. Mm -mm. It means laundry day is going to be a bitch. <laughs> You're going to have to shout that out. Here we go. Thank you, Bert from <laughs> Philly. We we start our list with Nugget, and we continue with Happy Camper. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Only nice people use the word Happy Camper. Well, there's a Happy on a Camper. On a regular basis. There mm -hmm. you go. We got two. Perhaps. Perhaps. A happy night. camper would enjoy this audio nugget. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps he'd be a happy camper if there was a nugget on his chest and this was being filmed in German. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The listeners on Instant Feedback, they're trying to come up with words only nice people use. Nice. Hey, guys. Um, yeah. The show. Like, thanks so much for doing audio nuggets and everything. That's cool. Because, like, some of us don't get to watch TV. And I thank you guys for bringing that to our attention and everything. The oh, Dateline stuff. The Dateline That's stuff, cool. yeah. But, uh... Do you guys ever, like, not get any calls? Like, I always wonder that. Like, do you guys ever, like, have a slow night? Um. And have to improvise something? Not, not very often because we're on a lot of radio stations. Oh, okay. But usually during uh, the Dateline audio, a lot of people like to sit back uh, and listen. put their feet up and, and drink okay. a beer listening. Yeah. Knowing, right. knowing that they have a good life compared to these guys getting caught. Oh, definitely. Yeah. They're a-holes. When, when, yeah. when we dump the audio nuggets, people like to listen, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But thank you. Thanks a lot, you guys. You, you do a good job and everything. Thanks. Well, I, Sandy. Then I always run it out in the back of my head. I'm like, what if nobody calls in? Then what do they do? Yeah. Or you just talk a lot. Yeah, we just talk on a talk show. Yeah. You can't just sit there and do nothing. Okay. Oh, you could. You We'd recommend it. <laughs> All right, Sandy. Sandy, thank you very much. These guys are gay, right? Uh, see, They're now, happy, Opie, right? that is something... I'm asking a question. That is something uh, you, you can only draw your own conclusions. I'm asking. Not, I'm not based accusing. in fact, but... You can still ask questions in America. Of course. I'm not accusing. Don't worry. Yeah. In my opinion, they sound like fruits. They do sound gay. If there is indeed a gay sound, that is it. That is the gay sound right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, we add to the list smidge or smidgen. <laughs> We're going to give you a little smidgen of a nugget today, an audio nugget. Smidge or smidgen. More words only nice people use. Yee. Scooch. Scooch. Could you scooch, scooch over. Scooch over a little bit. I, mean, I don't smidge. even know how to spell scooch. Scooch over a smidge. Because <laughs> I got a nugget on the seat that I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> scooch. All right, scooch. Uh, we got some other words coming in. Morsel? No. Swell? Oh, poo-poo. As in to poo-poo an idea. Poo-poo? Oh. Oh, Poo-poo that idea. All right, poo-poo. Oh, uh, so nice. Wow, this is just like doing an eggnog drinking contest. <laughs> uh, ducky, giggle, or G willikers. Any of those words make the nice list? Golly. Golly? Oh, gosh. Golly or gosh. Only uh, used by nice people. I like how Opie writes it down for future reference. <laughs> He's writing it down because you never know. Going to throw that up on the website. That should get oh, please. That should get uh, tons of hits on opianthony.com. What? Tens of hits? What? <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have a John and Jeff promo as a reference point there? Please. Because we're, we're making our own John and Jeff type promos. Yeah. They got their own style as far as their promos go. And we're kind of uh, biting the style. That's but right. but we change it up a little bit. That's right. Here's an example of a John and Jeff promo. The John and Jeff Show. Where do guys who think women who keep their maiden names in marriage are high maintenance? Where do guys who think there should be a law requiring prenuptial agreements before getting married? Where do guys who think if you're old enough to serve your country, you're old enough to be served a beer? The John and Jeff Show. The John and, the John John and Jeff, Jeff Show. That old gag. Yeah. Wow. Hey. Really going out on a limb. If I can fight for my country, I should be able to. Yeah, we know. All right, shut up. We know. It's kind of hack, to be honest with you. So then we made our it's own. It's not a new idea or thought. 
How about those are probably two guys that think you should be able to fight for your country without being asked certain nosy questions. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to pick your own foxhole, mate. <laughs> <laughs> So we made a uh, Opie and Anthony promo in the style of John and Jeff. This mm-hmm. was the one yesterday, and then we're going to debut a brand new one right after it. But yep. just in case you didn't hear it yesterday. The Opie and Anthony Show. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Two guys who think that your fat ass is the reason that no one loves you, and no one ever will. Two guys who think that if your kid has a birth defect, you should burn it and start over. guys who better have supper waiting for them when they get home or else <laughs> two guys <laughs> we think the Opie and Anthony show the Opie and Anthony, Opie and show. Anthony show hmm wonderful there you go so that, that was yesterday's can we play another John and Jeff promo just to make sure everyone gets it sometimes uh, you gotta do what they call spoon feed wow you gotta spoon feed them <laughs> I'm not talking to the smart ones out there. I'm talking to the dummies. Make sure we get the uh, controversy, the American Idol controversy, because they're showing that big fat kid. Uh, apparently, they're doing a story on Fox. Uh, about that fat kid is everywhere. He was on the Today Show. He was on Jimmy oh, Kimmel. Is he the new... Uh, and he's going to be on The View very shortly, him and <laughs> the Bush baby kid. I do understand he's retarded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Here's another John and Jeff promo. The John and Jeff Show. We're two guys who think every father paying child support is entitled to itemized receipts. We're two guys who don't trust handing over our car keys to a sister who calls himself a valet. We're two guys who think violent criminals should never get out of prison. The John and Jeff Show. Wow, going out on the limb again. Woo, wow. I say set set them all loose. All the violent prisoners, let them open the gates. Setting the radio world on fire with that last one. Like the itemized receipts one. What? Well, this is what we don't. That? This is what we don't get. Are they joking or or? Yeah, is that a goof? Like, because it's so ridiculous and out there, and who would ever think of that? If you pay child support, you should get itemized receipts. We're two really? guys that think nice radio stinks. Yeah. Well, we got a brand new Opie and Anthony promo in the oh. style of John and Joe. And here it is. It's a, it's a, it's one using our own voices, by the way. The Opie and Anthony Show. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. We're two guys that hate when <laughs> cut us off in traffic. We're two guys that'll give you the courtesy of a reach around. <laughs> We're two guys that think a flight to Thailand is much too long. We're two guys that think <laughs> the age of consent should be nine. <laughs> <laughs> the Opie and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony Show. Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> <laughs> now there you go. Now that's a promo. Nonsense. <laughs> know what it comes down to? We work. We work for a radio station here in New York, and then syndicated all over the world. Basically, at this point, uh, we work for a station here in New York where all the shows hate each other. They just don't get along. Yeah, for some reason. But like Tom wants everyone to get along. Like have this fake. Uh, well, everyone gets along here at Free FM in New York. No. We don't like uh, uh, any of the other shows. It just for some, I don't know why. There, there may be one show we like. How about that? Let the listeners try to figure oh, it out. Oh, that's good. You're like, it's like the fire. You know squad, what? But that... then they're going to go for the obvious choice. All right, how about two? We like two of the shows. But Tom's like, when anything starts bubbling, and, oh, 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 want everyone to get along. The reality is there's a bunch of egos in the same radio station, and, and pretty much everyone hates each other. But that's okay. People still listen to more than one show here. Yeah, you don't don't have to be one big happy family. No, it's 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 not based on reality. No. In the radio world, you basically hate every other show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Why is that? You might like one or two out there, but the rest you like. They, you wish they would go away. All right, there you go. There's our John Jeff uh, segment for today. We can't get enough of these guys. Save that promo. We're building a, a list this morning of words only said by nice people. Some dude from his cell phone. Only nice people say, yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Bob. Uh, you betcha. Potsy from Brooklyn. How about swell? Swell. Uh, like old words. 
You're mistaking nice words for ancient terminology. What about Lon uh, from Georgia? How about you go, girl? They're words or phrases, obviously. Oh, I know. Uh, Bill from Waterford. Nice word, nice people use. Oh, fudge. Instead of oh, yeah. 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 And uh, we go to the phones, one eight six six three one three free. Let's say hi to Charlie. Charlie, what's up? Morning, fellas. What's hey. up, Charlie? Uh, I've got one for your list, Dolph. Okay. African American. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, nice people say African American, don't they? That's not very nice. Paul from Boston, uh, cool beans. <laughs> Ugh. Those are douchey words. Let's go right to the phone and say hi to John on Long Island. John, what's hey, going on I, today? Hey. Hello there. Hello there. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, why can't you guys get along with uh, with John and Jeff? You know, Anthony, Jeff also owns a Mustang. You could bond with him. Uh, uh, you're, you're obviously no. uh, being sarcastic, sir, right? <laughs> There's no way we'd ever get along with a show like John and Jeff. <laughs> Well, see, he said he said this morning that uh, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said what? He Let's said go, this John. That he got. He said this morning he got pulled over in his Mustang by a cop because his uh, muffler was uh, playing a me- melodical tune, and it sounded so sweet that the cop wanted to know what kind of muffler he had. Wow. Yeah. No, 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 no. I know you are. You, are you car crashing John and Jeff or the caller? Because uh, that's that's exactly what is that what they did? That's what they were talking about no on their dumb way. show today. Yes. Oh God! See, what I was still it? can't figure Exhausted it out. Exhausted mufflers for three hours. One of them <laughs> has a muscle car, and the other one was complaining because he's not doing his part for the environment by having one of those mufflers that makes it sound really loud. So um, for three hours, they were complaining about. Um, how having a muscle car is only out to impress other men, not your woman that you're dating or married to. And right. that's what you should be concerned about and the environment, not impressing other guys. This went on for three hours about mufflers. Three hours. Now, I mufflers. understand a lot of America have no idea who John and Jeff are. By the way, Jimmy turned us on to John and Jeff uh, well over a year ago. They're out oh, of L.A. Yeah. And they're two guys that that are doing nice radio. So Jimmy I'm was sure ahead of his time. So I'm sure John. Man Cow's really into the John and Jeff show. They're just nice, and even when someone trashes them, they're just, they know how to diffuse it in a nice way. <laughs> they just talk about mundane, who gives a crap stuff. Nice stuff. Nice stuff. Nice radio. Nice boys. And uh, they're pretty much the polar opposite of this fine radio show. And uh, they're on before us here in New York and in a few other cities across America. And I guess someone, like, uh, called them about us this morning. Yeah. And they had nothing but nice things to say. How do you say <laughs> nice things about this despicable program after we just trash you? And, and yeah, well, I, don't, I don't know. These guys have to. This has to be a theater of the mind kind of goof show. These guys have to be like scumbags, and they're just they get on the air and just do a nice show and then laugh about what they did. Well. You know, uh, just, just to keep uh, get everyone up to speed, here's a, a promo for the John and Jeff show. Just shows you how much different they are than us. The John, John and Jeff, Jeff show. The John and Jeff show. We're two guys who think women who keep their maiden names in marriage are high maintenance. We're two guys who think DNA tests should Candy. be mandatory before a man's name goes on a birth certificate. We're two guys who think nobody should get married before the age of 30. The John and Jeff show. The John and, the John John and, and Jeff, Jeff show. show. We're two guys that think nobody should get married unless it's to another man. <laughs> the, John the, John Jeff 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 the John and Jeff Show. We're two guys who don't understand why realtors show pictures of themselves. We're two guys who think it's cheaper to have an affair than getting a divorce. We're two guys who think homeschooling is a brainwashing cult. The John and Jeff Show. The John and Jeff Show. I liked his um, Steve C. delivery on the phone. Oh, realtors have a picture. We're two guys who shave our arms. <laughs> uh, so, then, so then we decided to use their style and make our own promo. Don't worry, this is leading to a new chapter. The Opie and Anthony Show. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. We're two guys that hate when 
cut us off in traffic. We're two guys that'll give you the courtesy of a reach around. <laughs> We're two guys that think a flight to Thailand is much too long. We're two guys that think the age of consent should be nine. You stay away from me, Jim Norton. The Opie and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony Show. The Opie and Anthony Show. <laughs> <laughs> we're just I'm not gonna say because we get dumped out of we're two guys that yeah. think <laughs> is delicious <laughs> <laughs> so uh John Minnelli. yeah what's up with John Minnelli? we get along with John Minnelli. we go way back with John Minnelli. he's our program director he used to write for the uh New York Post and now he's the program director here in New York City yeah. He was the one that is responsible for bringing the John and Jeff show to the airwaves here in New York City and, and maybe other... Uh, probably just New York City, I guess. Was he drinking? I, I'm, I'm Did he hoping. have a drinking problem? I'm hoping. Did you wake up and go, whoa, Cause he's usually, what did I do last night? Holy jeez, I signed what? He's usually pretty perceptive, but on this one, I think he might have missed the boat. So uh, he writes me an email and he's like, I I'm enjoying... You guys beating up on my boys, John and Jeff, and he calls them my boys, John and Jeff. His boys, uh oh. And uh, and and then he goes, I'm thinking of using what some of the things you've said or you guys have said for a uh, John and Jeff promo. Like, and then I'm thinking that's why John Minnelli's the program director here in New York City. It's brilliant. Yeah. Because he's thinking out of the box. We need more people on regular radio to think out of the box and do things differently. So stupid me, I'm thinking there's going to be a John Jeff promo where we're just beating the crap Trash out of him. Trash him. Just killing him, right? Yep. This is what he did. This is what he meant. And I know what he's going for. He thinks people are going to catch on and realize that... Uh, that we're truly trashing them, but that we're not in the promo. Spliced together creatively, and, but you can tell. You can and tell that uh, that this makes us look like we really like the show, instead of mocking the show. Yeah. Listen for yourself. Re-FM, late nights, 2A to 6A. It's the John and Jeff Show, now endorsed by Opie and Anthony. It's two guys out of L.A., and they're nice. I enjoyed the program. Oh, God. They're terrific. John and Jeff. It's what they call the spice of life. I get it. Very nice. John and Jeff. Just very sweet. Qualified to give people advice. Yeah, absolutely. There are some mornings I cannot turn that off. It's so funny. John and Jeff. It's so funny. Late nights, 2 to 6. Funny. Now, ONA approved. You gotta listen. 92.3 Free FM. See, the promo was put together so well that no one gets the joke. It doesn't look it like... It really looks like we're truly endorsing these guys. God. You're supposed to know that we were bashing them, and through some bad editing, right? It's trying to make it sound like we're we're like putting them over and making them sound good, but it just sounds like we're endorsing them. Yeah, no one's getting the joke. No, no one. And now getting we look like joke. idiots because we're actually uh, <laughs> we're actually telling our listeners that this show's good. Tim, you put that together, right? No. Oh, you didn't? Uh, no. You will not find whoever is responsible for that. Well, that's they got, don't exist anymore. Well, uh, that's got to go. That's got to go. Yeah. I mean, if he wants to make a, like a promo where the splicing and the editing is r so bad it's obvious what's going on there, then fine. But he can't make it sound like yeah. we really like this show. We don't like this show. It's, uh, as we said, not our cup of tea. It's too controversial. I mean, all the stands they take. I mean, oh, my goodness. The, we're in a... Goodness we're, gracious. We're in a huge fight right here for our lives. They're trying to change radio in front of our eyes. We are? What? Yes. What you got Man Cow... Someone in here trying to kill us? You got Man Cow. <laughs> he's trying to, like, uh, start a movement for responsible radio. Ugh. You got the John Jeff show, which is just a nice show. They want nice radio, and we refuse to buckle. We refuse. And we got to go back to the John and Jeff thing. We have to. I hate these guys. That are supposed to make this show. Uh, what, what, what are these promos they keep giving us? They're not yeah. representative of the show. Not at all. No. Well, uh, for the rest of America, we uh, we pulled the John and Jeff bit of the day. This is the show that uh, is on before us. That's really going to help us with the ratings, i got to tell you. <laughs> Great uh, lead-in. Uh, thanks for the lead-in, fellas. Just like friends are <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Great lead in, thanks. Yeah. It's just like having uh, American Idol as your lead in before you talk to the entire country. Before your State of the Union. <laughs> right. It's the same exact thing that's going on here. But um, I'd rather listen to mating nursing sharks. <laughs> <laughs> A little more entertaining. 
But, you know, because uh, so, some of the countries, they're bitching, like, look, we have no idea because we don't have John Jeff on, on in our market. Well, don't you worry. E-Rock has a, a new job. His job is to get the John and Jeff bit of the day. How can he screw that up? And today's bit was them talking, uh, according to E-Rock, for three hours about mufflers. About mufflers and uh, muscle cars. And uh. muscle cars. So we got just a little taste, just oh, a little lady. taste of John and Jeff. And trust me, this is leading to a big laugh. Well, last mm -hmm. night, uh, Jeff and I had dinner with um, our agent, our business agent. And uh, it was an early dinner, and I decided... By the way, guess who represents them? Don't say <sighs> it. I swear to God, the same guy that represents us. Our agent, of course. <laughs> Will you get of rid course. of these hack radio shows and focus on us, you dummy? <laughs> what a dummy. Well, last night, uh, Jeff and I had dinner with um, our agent, our business agent. and uh, Wow, what a bore fest that must have been. Decided, oh, okay, holy I'll, I'll Jesus. I'll get there on time. And all of a sudden, I hear... Oh, someone like, sexy walked by? Yeah. Were you growling with Steve in the room with you? Young Malaysian busboy. <laughs> when a man makes that noise, it sounds very manly. Yeah. How do you mess that up? This ain't it. <laughs> and I heard, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. That's got to be Jeff. And I start looking around. I'm at a stoplight. Just the power bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea, but... Sloppy party bottom. <laughs> Looking around. I'm at a stoplight. And about 20 seconds later, Jeff ca Jeff's car passes in front of me. That means I heard Jeff's car a half a mile away at an intersection. I mean, Jeff, this is this is getting to the point where... Uh, you are not doing your part for the environment. Oh, no, no. I mean... <laughs> all right. All right. The, the whole thing's a joke. The whole show has got to be a goof on this type of radio. Remember, and they are I. They are geniuses, and they're goofing on this type of radio because no one actually goes, No, oh, oh, no, stop. Oh. Right? It's a joke, right? It, Come on, someone let me in on it. If it was out of New York, I'd say yes, but it's out of L.A. No, that, that's who they are. No, Jim. I think the question was, do you like vaginas? <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Ew. <laughs> Not doing your part for the environment. Oh, no. No. I mean, oh, if, come if on. I can, Jeff, if I can hear your car a half a mile away, your neighbors must hate your guts. And the reason you drive it is because you want people to look at you when you're driving. It's almost like when a woman gets breast implants. A woman gets breast implants for attention. Has a hard time well, talking Jeff about this. Drives his muscle car for the same sort of attention. You know, John. Some guys are into wine. They love a nice glass of wine. Some guys are a connoisseur of beer. I love <laughs> premium. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so glad you got that. <laughs> Gotta explain, man. <laughs> Anthony added that beep right at the perfect time. <laughs> at the perfect time. I love, yes, I bet you do. No man says they're a connoisseur of beer. Are you, uh, yes, some people are into wine. Don't you say you're a beer drinker? Yeah. No one is an actual connoisseur. connoisseur. They, they might like uh, trying out different beers, but they would never use the term connoisseur. You know who's a There's a one connoisseur of beer, Jim Cook. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He, his whole life is beer. Right. That's it. They love a nice glass of wine. Some guys are a connoisseur of beer. I love premium exhaust. I love the sound. I believe that you seek out attention from strangers with the car that you drive. You are like a woman with breast implants. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what you're all about. Listen, some guys will drive a Corvette when they reach 50 in order to get attention, but they're 50, and they're trying to get someone who's 18 or 19 to jump in the car. But, Jeff, you're already married. Yeah. So why would you want to drive a loud car? I mean... You're faithfully you're faithful to your wife, so yes. now you have all these women checking you out, and then you're teasing them. I mean, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't either. Good, good, good. 
little uh, re re remark there. I don't understand. If Mancow has it his way, that's this is what you would get to hear. That is all over responsible the radio. radio. Boring. That is responsible. Boring. Boring. The boring. foundation for responsible radio doesn't even have to look at those people. Right. I want those guys on a loop. It's all I want to listen to. <laughs> Be careful, John. That's gonna, in the next promo. Yeah, John Minnelli's going to make it into the next promo. If you weren't listening about a half hour ago, we trash these guys every day. We can't get enough of this, right? And we say horrific things. And uh, John Minnelli, he, he calls me up and goes, you know, I'm, I'm going to use some of the stuff you guys are saying about this show to make a promo. And I'm thinking, brilliant. He's thinking out of the box. He's going to actually just have a promo where we completely trash him. And that alone will get people to actually people listen. listen. Because even there are people out there that will listen to stuff they hate. The awful shows. Right. Yeah. But then uh, John Minnelli let us all down. And he took what we said uh. and made it sound like a real endorsement. Once again, oh. here's the promo. Yeah. And then we fight back after yeah. the promo. Yeah. Late nights, 2A to 6A. It's the John and Jeff Show. Now endorsed by Opie and Anthony. It's two guys out of L.A. and they're nice. I enjoyed the program. Oh, God. They're terrific. John and Jeff. It's what they call the spice of life. I get very it. Very nice. John and Jeff. Just very sweet. Qualified to give people advice. Yeah, absolutely. There are some mornings I cannot turn that off. It's so funny. John and Jeff. It's so funny. Late nights, 2 to 6. Funny. Now, ONA approved. You gotta listen. 92.3 Free FM. Look, man, I would say less than 1% of the people that uh, that are listening to that promo yeah. believe that it's a goof. Would take that as the joke that it's supposed to be. I would say well over 99% of the people going, wow, this show has to be good. Opie and Anthony like this show. They're endorsing it. John Minnelli let us down. He wimped out. So, uh, you know, we didn't. Steve, take it into our own hands is what we do, so my Steve, friend. Good old Steve and Dirk and the gang. Yep. Uh, they made the promo that should have been made. Mm -hmm. That should be playing on the station when we're not here. <laughs> It's a little different. Free FM. Late nights, 2A to 6A. It's the John and Jeff Show, frowned upon by Opie and Anthony. One of them sounds kind of gay, and the other one visits Thailand. John and Jeff just stink. In my opinion, they sound like fruits. People that go to Thailand are kid touchers. Ugh, they're awful! If there is a gay sound, that is it. It's crap. John and Jeff. It's crap. Late crap. nights, 2 to 6, crap. when the rest of the world is sleeping. <laughs> now you do that with Free FM. Now that that, now that hits it. John Minnelli, let's see what you're made of. It's done and ready to go. Put it on in rotation. Put this in rotation. That's the one we want playing. And get the other one uh, out promo, of rotation. That promo is ONA approved. Absolutely. Whew. So then uh, <laughs> this will be it for today. Until next time, we'll try to rest this for a while. But uh, uh, one of our callers got into John and Jeff uh, this morning. All right. Got, yeah, they called John and Jeff, whatever. War. Steve. Can I say one more thing? Very quickly, we're very late the, here. The people that come on after you in New York, I'm not going to say their names because I don't want to give them any uh, advertisement. Boy, they talk, on they trash show? you guys, and I just, I crack up because the more you talk bad about somebody, the more people want to hear. Well, what happened? Uh oh, Iraq screwed up. Yeah, we want the part where they actually... Uh, E-Rock. E-Rock. Complete say, tool. What happened? I guess it what? You, you guess it cut off either that or we all went deaf together. Your how, about, how about on mic there, E-Rock? Your answer is, I guess it cut off? I burnt it. I don't know what happened to it, but I have it right here if you want to... Can you burn yourself? <laughs> <laughs> You're John and Jeff as one. All right, here. <laughs> Let's play it again. Steve? Can I say one more thing? Very quickly. We're very late so, here. The people that come on after you in New York, I'm not going to say their names because I don't want to give them any uh, advertisement. Boy, they talk, they trash you guys, and I just, I crack up because the more you talk bad about somebody, the more people want to hear it. So I'm sure they're promoting you guys very well. Well, uh, Opie and Anthony, we're, we're happy to be the opening act for their show in New York, and uh, hey, it's all good. So, Steve, thank you very much for the call. We appreciate it. Aww. Yeah, rock on. All right, have a good night. I hate radio. They're so nice. They are too nice for their own good. You wow. have to fight back at this point. We've said horrific things about you boys. We're bullies. How about this? I'm going to rape John and Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Is this good for this early in the morning? Jesus. What the hell is this music? 
Yeah, we might want to mellow it out a little bit. People and are then, still waking up. And then by like, you know, maybe 7.30. Then we, we can start, start rocking. This. Start with this. I think some kind of lullaby. Yeah. Like a music box. Bling, ding, bling, 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 bling. Yeah, that's uh, that, that that's not appropriate. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Get your get your get your. Wash your face, wash your face, brush your teeth, right? Right, right, I'm up, I'm up. This drives you crazy. You need something a little mellower and happier. I wake up to John and Jeff. Dan raises his hand. Well, I have my clock radio next to me, and of course, it is set here in New York. I uh, set to regular radio, so I, I put free FM on. And uh, I wake up to it. You know why? Because I, wa <laughs> I won't just sit there listening to it. <laughs> I can't hit the button that shuts it off quickly enough. <laughs> I'm amazed that these guys are on the radio. It is stunning. <laughs> I'm amazed. They're the, uh, what they call uh, themselves, the third shift. Yeah, wow. Well. I guess it's um, the overnight, like... You know when everyone's sleeping? When normal that's people when are they sleeping. Work. I guess this is radio for dummies. That's when they're on. Radio for dummies. I just picture or somebody. Insomniacs. I picture somebody in front of a, a black and white television set. Yeah. With the sound turned down. Yeah. With uh, John and Jeff turned up. Mm -hmm. And they're rocking in their own feces <laughs> with their eyes agape. <laughs> just And it's 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> And they just don't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> Been up for hours. Yeah, it's just like listening to Gene Shepard. Huh? Huh? Wow. Oh, okay. The book. Yeah, I'm reading a book. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was amazing, Gene Shepard. Was he? Got to give props to Gene Shepard. Uh, Gene Shepard ripped me off. Uh, know what I read in this book? And I'm not telling you what book. Gene Shepard. Why, someone's going to get it and slow down your reading? It's not the internet. <laughs> Gene Shepard <laughs> <Like a> was... <website. laughs> Howard likes to tell everyone that he invented who, who uh, you know, talk radio, but uh, it goes way back to uh, uh, people like Gene Shepard, one of the first uh, uh, talk show hosts that wasn't talking about the news and politics, just a guy to hang out with. Yeah. You know, you know the uh, one of uh, your pals on the air. You know, yeah, exactly. You know the the from network. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yep. Shouting from the windows. Gene Shepard used to kind of do that every night with, uh, the, but he would do other things. He would he would tell his listeners to put the radio up against the the window and turn it up real loud, and then he would yell crazy things for the city of New York. Please hold. It's not wacky because it happened in what? Maybe today it would be what wacky, year? but we're talking... The, what year was Gene Shepard on the radio? The early 60s somewhere is in there, maybe? Early 60s? There was a radio back then? Maybe mid... I don't know. My God, man. But uh, yeah, he, he's one of the pioneers of what we do today, Anthony. What we do today. And no, it's great. Um, the radio station he worked for at the time mm -hmm. didn't didn't want to like uh, open up the studio at night for his his stupid uh, overnight babble. Yeah. So they made him broadcast his show from the transmitter in a hut. <laughs> a hut. <laughs> I guess there was right a by the stick. No, I guess there was like a little shed. Yeah, there's usually sheds by those for the engineers near the yep. you know the transmitters. They so go they out there, check their meters, and they they have to fiddle with all the knobs, right? A Jimmy? lot of fiddling going on at the, the at the transmitter. The, yeah, the engineers go out there to fiddle and make sure everything's right. <laughs> and I guess they had a little shed, and uh, so you just plug a microphone into a a wire. Magic said, "Look, I, we, splice it. We don't want to open up the radio station uh, in the middle of the night because we don't think anyone listens to the radio." During the third shift. Well. But we will allow they you. They had something there. <laughs> we will allow you to do your show from the shed at the transmitters. Somewhere in the in the swamps of Jersey, in the Meadowlands there. Why can't uh, John and Jeff do their show from the top of the Empire State <laughs> Building then? <laughs> Wherever our transmitter well, John is. John and Jeff, just like Gene Shepard. My mm. God. Uh, we got the John and Jeff uh, bit of the day. Okay. By the way, we're in a lot of cities. And... Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of these cities don't have the privilege of having John and Jeff on the airwaves. Uh, hopefully, that'll change. They're on before us here in New York. They're on in L.A. They're on, I think, uh, before us in Chicago. And I, I got really? I hope Boston wasn't stupid enough to pick up the John and Jeff show. <laughs> stupid enough. If, if if Boston is stupid enough to call out the bomb squads for now, light brights, I'll tell you who was stupid enough. Ready? Us in New York. Chicago, stupid enough to have the John and Jeff show on their airwaves. Um, San Francisco. Of course. And mm. that is about it. 
So here is today's John and Jeff moment. Listen and laugh along. It's quick. Look out for yourself. It's almost like what the flight attendants say during a, uh, you know, the safety instructions before they leave. Put on your seatbelt first and your oxygen mask first before you put your kid's mask on first. In other words, save yourself first before your kid. And you know what's really odd, Jeff, about these uh, pre-flight announcements is when they refer to a water landing, don't you mean oh. a water crash? Um, Every flight attendant says, oh, in the no. event of a water landing, uh, no, if you hit the water, you're crashing. No yeah, all of a sudden, a little <laughs> flotation vice, device, the one you're sitting on, really the piece of the chair, ain't going to mean squat, because once you hit uh. that water, it's it's lights out, all right? Squat. It's like cement. There's going to be pieces everywhere, and uh, that damn little flotation device, damn. that stupid little balloon thing that comes out the side of the plane, ain't going to mean squat. In case of a water landing, <laughs> please go to your nearest exit. By then you'll be dead. <laughs> Just like Gene Shepard. Wow. Does anybody remember last time? Wow. Oh, dear Lord, indeed. What cornwall. <laughs> what cornwall. That, um, <laughs> that's probably one of the hackiest bits. I think that first was done the second, like, the Wright brothers landed their little aircraft. <laughs> and I think that material started coming out. How about that airplane, huh? They had nothing to eat, so the one had a little pack of peanuts, and so the other, and he goes, what is with these little pack of peanuts? <laughs> Orville, give me a peanut. An open micer wouldn't even try that bit. No, it's awful. Hey, which is Fan? which? Which is which? <laughs> Ouch. Oh. I know. That, that hurt. I'm sorry. Dan knows I love him. <laughs> All right. And this is the one we made? Yeah, so then um, John Minnelli, you know, we beat these guys up on a regular basis. And John Minnelli decided that to make a promo that shows that we're endorsing these guys. Yeah. We wanted it to be kind of a, if you wanted to call uh, our show for promotional material for John and Jeff, uh, you know, play it straight. Play with the way we talk about the show. We think it stinks. Right. Don't put it together in a way that makes it sound like we like it. Or you could put it together in a way that sounds like we like it, but it's so over the top and badly edited that you would know that it's spliced together. Right. Badly. Yeah, this affects our cred, man. Our cred. <laughs> our cred. We have cred of any type. Of course we do. We have okay. crud. Late nights, 2A to 6A. It's the John and Jeff Show. Now endorsed by Opie and Anthony. It's two guys out of L.A. and they're nice. I enjoyed the program. Oh, God. They're terrific. John and Jeff. I what know. they call the spice of life. I get very it. Very nice. John and Jeff. Just very sweet. Qualified to give people advice. Yeah, absolutely. There are some mornings I cannot turn that off. So funny. John and Jeff. So funny. Late nights, 2 to 6. Funny. Now, ONA approved. You gotta listen. 92.3 Free FM. See, Dude, most that's people, not sarcastic. Most people that listen to the radio, they don't listen closely enough to to realize that that's a goof. They they think it's the real deal that we actually like their program. That's some endorsement. And then you would tune in that program and go, why, why, why do my radio heroes like a show like this? They like that, and we don't like that. So we made our own promo. Sounds a little different. <laughs> The tab. Free FM. Late nights, 2A to 6A. It's the John and Jeff Show, frowned upon by Opie and Anthony. One of them sounds kind of gay, and the other one visits Thailand. John and Jeff just stink. In my opinion, they sound like fruits. People that go to Thailand are kid touchers. Ugh, they're awful! If there is a gay sound, that is it. It's crap. John and Jeff. It's crap. Late crap. nights, 2 to 6, crap. when the rest of the world is sleeping. 92.3 Free FM. <laughs> <laughs> See? That's much better. That's way better. So anyway, you wake up to uh, John and Jeff because it gets you out of bed real fast. It makes me hit the alarm real quick. <laughs> right. Like, I, I can't get to it fast enough because I really don't want to hear more than just two words to wake me up. I don't want to know what they're talking about at all because then I'll just get angry. <laughs> yeah. You know what I wake up to every morning? Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. One of those? Pleasing. Yeah, because that's much more pleasing than actually waking oh, up yeah, to a radio to, station. To them. 